That's as big as my head. You don't give a damn whenever I want you to. You only call me. Hello, Palpation Nation. Welcome to the vlog. I feel like I haven't vlogged in a long time. It wasn't a purposeful break, it was just life catching up. This week I was off to Saskatchewan. Uh, today is Friday, I left at 3.30 a.m. on Tuesday and I got back at 9.30 p.m. on Wednesday. Yesterday was just a miserable cold day. I did 16 post-mortems, so it wasn't really vlog worthy either, uh, but I thought I'd break out the old camera today. Okay, so far, it's a light day. I was in the office all day. Well, it wasn't like, it was busy in the office, but it wasn't busy in the field. And you guys just like to see the field stuff, right? I don't know what you like. So, so far I got one post-mortem out in the field. And it, oh yeah, it snowed. You guys like snow? Winter is here. whenever it's good for you. Treat me like a toy, but I won't wait for you. You know you're throwing it all away. So why don't you talk to a bank instead? You're in over your head. You're in over your head. So why don't you talk to a bank instead? In over yeah, the feet lie down. One dead cut. We're kind of getting into our busy season on the feedlot side. Uh, we've been doing lots of training and protocol reviews and stuff like that, but now cow feedlots are getting full and the calves are getting a little bit sick. So I'm gonna predict fibrinous pneumonia. That's the typical shipping fever. There's my little baby right there. Uh, fibrinous pneumonia, that is the typical shipping fever pneumonia. Uh, those calves that come in, they receive a lot of times an antibiotic to help stifle that. They get their vaccines. We hope they respond to their vaccines by the time their antibiotics wear off and then they can stay happy and healthy. It's the pen rider's responsibility to get in there and to pen check them and to make sure that they are healthy. And if there, anything is sick, it gets pulled to a hospital, it gets its temperature taken, and if it is hot, then it gets another antibiotic after the, the first one had run out. Right now, just because those calves are in the early stages, uh, some of them don't mount that immune response. They're still immunosuppressed from coming through uh, into the feed yards. Shipping fever is caused by Mannheimi hemolyticum most of the time. There can be other pathogens associated with it. And usually there's a viral component as well, whether that's BVD or IVR or BRSV. Uh, there is other viruses that can suppress the immune system or cause lung damage and then allow that bacteria to take hold. Okay, let's see why this baby died. This is not a fibrinous pneumonia, this is more chronic. And here you can see the pus leaking out of the bronchioles. Can you see the bronchioles there? And that's pus leaking out of it, so that's a suppurative, meaning pus, bronchopneumonia chronic pneumonia. If you cultured that, you would find a variety of different things. You could find Pastorella multocida, you could find Manheimia, you could find Histophilus, you could find Mycoplasma. So yeah, that's a separate of bronchopneumonia. Look at the pus coming out of there. And a good portion of his lungs are affected with that. But he also has this interlobular edema. If you can see really close there, in between the individual lobules of his lung lobes, you can see some edema, so I'm also considering that he has a problem with his heart as well. So we'll take a look into that. The heart seems quite large for his size. 
Like that's a pretty big heart for a little six weight calf. That's as big as my head. That is a beautiful, that's, that should be the thumbnail. Okay, I'll take a look into there. Left ventricle, right ventricle. And watch this trick. There is the papillary muscle. You see that big papillary muscle right there? When I cut into it, there it is. There you can see a nice fibrosed myocardial infarct secondary to Histophilus somni infection. So he's got a bronchopneumonia, but what killed him was this, this myocardial lesion. So the Histophilus gets in there, causes an infection, causes an infarct or a stop of blood, piece of that heart dies, and then he essentially has a heart attack. Sometimes we'll see it acute where it's very red and the animal died right away. In this case, it was chronic. Uh, so. Really, he was just a ticking time bomb with this big, nasty piece of scar tissue in his heart, which can affect electrical conductivity uh, and can cause him to perish. So he, that, that edema that was in his lungs that I saw in his lungs uh, was secondary to his heart failing. You have a backing up of blood flow, passive congestion, and uh, as his heart was starting to go into that heart failure. And that would be considered left-sided heart failure. The blood is stopping in the, in the lungs before getting pumped into the left ventricle and going to the rest of the body. So that's why, uh, that's why it's presenting that way as opposed to right-sided heart failure, backing up of blood into the liver and the rest of the extremities because it's not bringing that blood back into the heart itself from the rest of the body. Okay, I'll finish the postmortem, but that's it. Myocardial infarction, secondary histophilus somni infection. Talk to a bank instead. You're in over your head. You're in over your head. So why don't you talk to a bank instead? You're in over your head. You're in over your head. This tag number, you can see the two notches there. This feedlot uses a notch system to identify that this animal had been treated in the past. The visual cue to the pen rider is that the animal's been treated before. So, how we control Histophilus somni is easy in theory, uh, not so effective when it comes down to reality. So the things that we do are, we start simple, we make sure we're getting good quality calves. These calves aren't immunocompromised, they've been vaccinated in the past, they've been on a great nutritional program, starting off with just a healthy calf. The next up is where you get those calves from, calves that are direct marketed, that go direct into the feedlot and bypass the the auction mart system oftentimes are healthier than calves that, that go through that system, especially things like pre-sort sales where those calves can be at the auction mart for three or four days. Uh, decreased transport time, decreased stress in general can really help prevent this disease. Once we get the calf, sometimes we can't control that, so then we rely on vaccinations and antibiotics. So we do vaccinate all of the fall place calves with uh, Histophilus somni vaccine. Uh, in general, the vaccine isn't spectacular. Uh, there certainly can be advances made in that vaccine technology, but uh, uh, the vaccine technology in general is fairly antiquated. Next up is antibiotics. So we can use antibiotics to both promote the overall health of those calves so they're not fighting other bacterial infections so they can mount a good immune response against Histophilus somni. So what we would use would be injectable antibiotics on arrival, so the term metaphylaxis, mass treatment of calves on arrival. And the other thing that we can do to help control Histophilus somni infection is also the use of in-feed antibiotics. So basically a daily dose of a tetracycline would be most common to help control Histophilus somni and other BRD bacterial pathogens. And after that, we just kind of have to wait. We can treat uh, we can treat when we suspect specific diseases. Uh, the, that's often unrewarding. Uh, like you saw with the heart muscle, as soon as that heart becomes infected, it's really hard for us to get adequate antibiotics into that area to control that infection. And even if we could, sometimes that infection is already too far gone and the heart damage is already done. 
So that's what we see. In terms of presentation, uh, most of these calves are 40 to 60 days on feed. We have this blip of Histophilus somni in terms of the epidemiology. And then after that, we really don't see too many cases. So we just ride it out and do as much of prevention as possible. But really the number one key is those calves are healthy and stress-free coming into the feed yards. But based off of the logistics of the system of the cattle industry, sometimes that's not always possible. Calves have to go through the auction mart system. And sometimes calves have to get shipped from a long ways away sometimes those calves aren't vaccinated because the feedlot owner can't control how animals are being managed outside of their own herds. Okay, I'm going to go write up my paperwork for him. We will see a little bit on his history and then that is it for me for today. Except for I might run out of gas. I'm real low gas. I was supposed to stop for gas two towns back and then I was on the phone. If I run out of gas, it'll make for a good vlog at least. Back home, Diana is on a rare movie night out, so I have the kids. Say hi, kids. Hi, kids. What are we eating for supper? Craft dinner and hot dogs. Fun fact, I'm actually a fairly decent cook, but these days Diana does all the cooking, so I copped out, did the dad thing. Are you liking that, Neve? Are you liking that, Neve? What are we going to do after supper, Emmy? Movie night. What are we going to watch? Justin Time. That's not a movie. I want to watch Justin Neve, Time. what's your favorite show? Daddy Show Cow. Daddy Show Cow. Okay, let's finish supper so we can have a movie night. But I won't leave you, you know you're throwing it all away. Tired. Do you want your little stubby? No, no. I'm sure you like your from and then the rest of me doesn't get lost. Night, night. Night, night. Thanks for the fun movie night. The kids are sleeping. No problems, Neve went down without mum, which doesn't happen very often. Diana's still at the movie, now I edit. It's kind of meta, like I'm editing this vlog right now. It's weird. Stay out of my gas hole. <laughs>